Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. So I'm breaking my mini-series of the Apocalypse Dragons. I just thought we could sprinkle in the next mini-series in between the Apocalypses. Um, so today we're going to be doing a highly requested Zodiac Dragon. So this Zodiac, I'm going off of the Celestial Zodiac, not the Chinese Zodiac. So like Cancer... Uh, Libra, Scorpio, Capricorn. I think there's a Capricorn. Is there a Capricorn? I don't know. I only know my sign and I'm not very good at knowing all the other signs. So yeah, I know there's a Leo and a few others. I don't know. I don't follow astrology very much, so I don't remember all of them. Anyway, we're going to start with my sign, which is Cancer. So I am a, a big crab. Hooray. <laughs> I think I'm specifically a water Cancer, I think. Yes, yes, I think I'm still a water sign. I don't know. I don't know anything about celestial zodiac stuff and astrology and all that stuff. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in and get this dragon started. So obviously I'm gonna lean heavily into our lovely little crustacean with this design and make it very heavily influenced by a crab. So with this one, I wanted to kind of have a combination of it looks like a really magnificent kind of celestial-ish crab um, and then something that's more realistic, I guess. I I basically leaned more in on the more uh, true-to-life crab, I guess, so I, I didn't add the celestial bits that I was thinking at first. I started more thinking about what would it look like if it was literally a crab dragon um, it, I was just really torn on if I should go more godlike, I guess. I know, like, celestial zodiac signs aren't seen as gods, and I know they just kind of have simple depictions of themselves, but I was like, man, should I go, like, super high-powered star being type of look, or kind of more realistic and just make it an interesting creature design? I mean, either way, it would have been interesting if I made it look more celestial god-ish looking, but I kind of decided to just make it this big, magnificently colored crab. And I think that's how I kind of leaned into the more star godlike look was basically by my colors. And that was a really long ramble to get around to what I was saying. So I apologize, it's just my brain. Anyway, so with the design figured out, it was time to jump in and do the finalized sketch. So. Uh, it's really fun. I'm gonna bring this up again, but back when I started the 100 Dragon Challenge, I was like, you know, every five, I'm gonna do a full body. And so far, I've done so many full bodies in a row that I don't think I'm ever gonna go back to doing portraits, because it's just so fun to draw the full body of the dragon. And you guys seem to like it a lot, so, you know, it's gonna stick around. So with this one, I knew this was gonna be a big boy with his big claws and uh, kind of just larger frame in general. So I needed to make sure to lay them out in a good spot and have enough room to fill with this giant crab dragon. In terms of the pose, I wanted to show off as much of the body as I could because I really wanted to have fun just coloring this one. I did a lot of research on uh, different crab types and I'll let you guys know which one I picked when we get closer to coloring. But after figuring out the pattern that I wanted to put on this thing, I was like, yeah, let's let's give it the full body experience. Like you see every leg, every side of it. So then you can really see the different colors and color transitions that I have in the final piece. I also had a lot of fun making this one very spiky because many a times that I go out for seafood, which is not very many anymore because <laughs> seafood is expensive. But the times that I can go out, for seafood, I really like eating crab and the little spines and like spikes on it hurt like the dickens, especially depending on what type of crab you get. That's why I usually get snow crab because those spines and spikes don't hurt as much. But anyway, I had a lot of fun putting a lot of spikes all over this boy. He would be very painful to touch, especially if you hit any of those. I don't know why I went on a ramble about eating seafood, but either way, time to jump in and do the line art. So I wanted to add a lot of details on this. So I did look at some pictures of crabs to figure out how 
they are structured underneath and I had to take some liberties obviously because this is not like a normal crab. It's just like a completely different shape and size. So I kind of just ran with my own idea of how the anatomy underneath this would work. So now with the detailing line art done, it was time to jump in and add a little bit of diversity in the line work. I added a thicker line for the things that should be coming closer to the viewer, um, just so then we could have a little bit of diversity and you can really see the difference of uh, layering kind of idea. Basically what a thing that is over another thing should have thicker lines. That was the best explanation ever. I am really nailing it today. Anyway, with the line art done, it was time to jump in and get some color. So I based my crab coloring off of the blue crab. It is a really pretty crab. There are so many different diverse patternings with it as well. Like some of them are primarily like blues and yellows. And there's a few that have like some oranges and reds and uh, more like purple reds really cool colors so i knew that this is the one i wanted to use for this crab i know that the i guess the traditional crab is like the red crab you see that one a lot everywhere in media and in other places but i was like the blue crab is just a, like adorable and it's really well colored and uh, i just really love the coloring on it and it gave me a lot of like diversity in the colors because we had those oranges and reds and like pale yellows and greens it was like a really good chance for me to just let loose and color this guy like really awesomely i was able to add some extra flair and like tips and patterns all over him like on his spines on the original blue crab image that i was referencing at the end of the spines it was like orange and then that transitioned into red and i thought that was just so beautiful and gorgeous, so I knew that I had to carry that over into my final dragon design. This was a little bit more difficult to blend because I was going from such a light color into such a dark color, at least on the edges where the spines were compared to the rest of the shell. So that made it a little bit harder. And then the underbelly, I was realizing that took up a lot of real estate, I guess, because with the dragon kind of rearing its head up, you would see a lot more of the underbelly of it. And then the top shell, I kind of wish I made go lower, like got a lot of, like a lot closer to the legs. I think I added way too much underbelly and I wasn't able to really highlight that blue as much. I think this one still turned out pretty good, but I wish I brought that shell a little bit lower and closer to the legs. I don't know how that would work anatomically because I feel crabs are just such a flat topped creature that it was hard to wrap my head around how that similar structure would go around a less flat creature. Um, I guess it'd be similar to like a lobster, but I was like, no, this isn't a lobster, this is a crab. Uh, but either way, I think it still worked pretty well. I just wish I had a little bit more shell to work with. But either way, I mean, the claws were a great piece to highlight. They were up close and personal to the viewer, and I just let loose and just did this interesting rainbow-ish effect. I noticed some of the crabs that I looked at, the end of their claws were um, orange to red, and then they would transition backwards into yellow and then eventually back to blue. So I thought that worked really well for this and it just made it look very 
interesting and bright and colorful. It just kind of feels like a mythical beast, you know? Like when something is diversely colored and has a very interesting color palette, it always gives me the feel that it's something mythical and interesting. Cause this is like, I feel this is straddling that line of real natural coloring. Like if I was to literally take exactly how the crab was colored and apply it to this, it's kind of straddling that line of realistic to fantasy coloring. It's like that nice in between where you can tell that this was maybe influenced by something in nature, but it's not fully like realistic. It has a, a nice fantasy element to it. So the tail was also a really fun and interesting structure to figure out. Again, that's one of those things that a crab doesn't have. So it was kind of fun applying the anatomy of a crab to like a long tail. And I feel this one turned out pretty good. I was pretty happy with the tail overall. And I, I really like this little crab dragon. He's pretty dang cute. And I'm really excited to do the other zodiac of like the, the celestial zodiac. There's a lot of interesting things we could do. Some of them I feel might straddle a little bit with repeat, like uh, Leo might be interesting to figure out since we've done a few lion dragons, but I think we can make something interesting and, and diverse for each of these dragons. So I'm excited to jump in and do the other, what, 11 celestial? Yeah, because there's 12 unless you go by that 13 that they had for a bit. I don't even know. I need to do some more research, but I know there's 12 because each month of the year. Um, either way, this one is all done. I had a lot of fun doing this crab cancer dragon, but let's go ahead and jump into last week's where we did the plague dragons. You guys did amazing. These were super, super cool. I had a blast looking through them. And you know, I'm not joking when I say this, it was really hard for me to pick entries this month, but let's go through the three highlighted today. ADN a normal, holy crap, tryptophobes beware. This one is super cool. I love the detailing you did and like how the skin is degenerating and it looks like those uh, bot fly type of things, really cool. Crystal clear art, this one is really awesome. I love the dynamic pose of the hand coming towards the viewer and I just love the colors you picked. Jonah Havelina, really cool. I I don't know, it was just like so visceral and you can really feel the emotion behind this dragon. And I like the design that you did for this and the color palette, really liked it overall. And all of you did amazing. Like seriously, really cool dragon. Some of you went for more the Plague Doctor look, others went for like literally what the plague germs look like or like different uh, aspects of plague. Really cool. Just, these were really fun to look at and just tickled my little dark bones, I guess, like, you know, really dark, gross, disgusting creatures I love. And this really was really cool to look through. 
But either way, if you guys would like to enter for this week's Cancer Dragon, make sure to post your dragons under the hashtag KM100Dragons, either on Twitter or Instagram, and try to get them up before 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on the Thursday before the dragon is released. That's when I collect entries, so if you don't make it by then, you might not make it in the video. But either way, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you liked it, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like down below and share your dragon ideas down in the comments as well. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.